Uh, due to extenuating circumstances this year, otherwise known as COVID, uh, we were unable to hold our annual family night. So in lieu of that, we decided to sit down uh, with a teacher from each grade and just hold a discussion uh, for a few minutes about what is going on within those respective grades. Uh, and as I thought about the 12th grade, uh, Mr. Blackburn came to mind. He's in his 15th year here at ACA. That's probably hard to believe. Uh, and primarily he's been a rhetoric teacher over the years, but also we've, we've considered him our philosophy teacher. And, but really that means rhetoric, English, and uh, maybe a weight training class uh, every now and again. So thankful that he's joining uh, me with this uh, discussion. I um, wanna, wanna ask you, uh, Mr. Blackburn, you know, we, we try to identify, you know, at different points in a child's academic career, uh, what we want them to accomplish, objectives that we may for, have for them. And so as, as you look at the 12th grade, um, what are some of those elements that, that we wanna see out of them or that we would have for them at this point in their academic career? In a word, polish. We want to finish what we've started. We want to finish it well. These kids are veterans to the classical system in a very real sense. All of them have been here at least a year, most of them many, many more years. And so there's very little having to do the basics anymore. So most of what we're doing is the high-end polishing of the final skills of rhetoric, written, oral, communication, those AP classes that are a little bit higher than what we might have at the other levels, and really just that last touch of being able to feed into these kids spiritually. Um, and that's that's a big one for me always, and I know for many of our, our teachers that's a big one. And you know, this is a class that I never fail to do devotions with, to talk through those types of issues, because I think when it comes down to it, that's going to be what is going to make the difference. Yeah, so you mentioned that word classical. Um, parents, I'm hoping that over the years you've heard that term frequently, that we offer a classical Christian education. That is one of the distinctives for us as a school. And so, uh, Mr. Blackburn, as, as you think about uh, how that actually plays out in the classroom, um, you know, parents walking down the halls, what would we want them to see if they were to kind of peek in a senior level class as far as maybe some of the strategies that are being used? I think they're going to see a lot of conversation, a lot of dialogue, uh, maybe even to the point where they would say, is there teaching going on at times? Because there's there's much more of an emphasis on having the kids you know, take the reins to some extent and start to give them some autonomy with uh, how they approach whatever issue we're discussing at the time or whatever lesson we're trying to learn at the time. Um, and that really culminates in that rhetoric class that's offered at our school that is, is very unique um, with our rhetoric one in junior year and rhetoric two in senior year, where they're being taught the, the basics of how to communicate. And that's really what those classes are all about, how to be persuasive, how to you know, search for truth, how to relate that to someone else, which is part and parcel to spreading the gospel. Uh, let, let me kind of turn our attention a little more from uh, maybe what we want to accomplish academically to this class individually. Uh, every class is unique, collective strengths, weaknesses, and so as you think about the class of 2021, that's what they are, uh, parents, class 2021, um, what would you identify as maybe being collective strengths? And at the same time, what's something that you're thinking, you know, I'd like to see this improve over the final seven months of the year or so? Um, I'd say these guys are engaged. I really see them coming through the door with a, just a desire to learn, a desire to engage with one another. It's not hard to get them to communicate and, and to do that dialogue we were just discussing. And they, they're they really, really good at that. They, uh, they want to be heard, uh, which we would hope by the time they've been in this school this long, that's exactly where they should be, that they're, they're at that developmental stage where they want their own autonomy, they want to be heard, they want their ideas out there. And that's exactly what I'm seeing with them. Um, as far as uh, something to improve, like every senior class, just maturity. Because we do, to some extent, live in a bubble in this small community that we're in. And they're going to be facing a whole lot of adversity that they know very little about at this point. And so just 
that continued prayer that God will use them in a mighty way and the maturity to step into that role. Yeah, yeah, that's a good word. Kind of, kind of a final question here. I'd like to give you a final opportunity to, to plug the class you spend so much time with and has really kind of been your personal heartbeat uh, and that is the regular class. I know some of our seniors um, have a high degree of anxiety and have maybe even held concerns for years ever since they you know, watched a, a presentation in the sixth or seventh grade. Uh, in some cases, they're looking forward to it. How would you maybe speak into that situation? Our first thesis due date is next Friday for the first thing that we're doing with that. Uh, so far, I've heard a lot of excitement as kids are trying to you know, jostle through the number of different topics that they might be looking at. I've had several come to me and say, man, I've got two I really want to do and I'm not sure which to lean on. And, and so that's been a lot of the discussion so far. And so I think there's a lot of excitement, obviously, nervousness, trepidation as we move toward that process. Uh, what's good is that we've got a long time still that we're working on that, that they're going to be very much just soaking in those ideas that they're looking at now just starting to look at and by the time we get around to may uh, I, I think they're all going to be right where they should be as we go into those presentations yeah. um, which lord willing we'll do in person or we'll be doing online one of the two yeah i know every year you see students that make such a significant jump from even the beginning of their senior year to the end of that senior year when they when they give that significant presentation uh, to a panel of judges and so we always look forward to that um, parents just uh, want to let you know that you're going to be receiving an email uh, actually by the time you're watching this you should already have an email giving you directions on how to sign up for a parent teacher conference we are asking that you would do that if you've met with one of your students teachers within the last month or five weeks that will not be necessary and understand we're not asking you to do a face-to-face -face meeting we can do that through teleconference we can do that through a video conference or it could be face-to-face uh, however, we are asking that you would sign up for one. If you have more than one child in between the 7th and 12th grades, we would ask that you fill out a form for each one of those children. Mr. Blackburn, thank you for joining us for this brief discussion, although it was very helpful. And we look forward to seeing you at your parent-teacher conference.